Councillor Parry, please. Uh, thanks, Provost. And can I first of all say thank you to David um, and all of your team. I know that there's, this has been a, a real labour of love and that lots of, lots of your team have been involved in this really detailed um, piece of work. And I think we're very fortunate as a council to have um, been able to get this paper to council today um, and will form um, part of our, our, our budget in the next um, paper as well. So I, I do want to put on record um, my thanks to yourself and to Link um, as well for, for putting together the report. I did obviously just want to add a little bit of caution. I know that those figures sound um, big um, and, and meaningful, um, but this is one-off uh, money. It's not cash in the bank. It is, like David said, um, a, a kind of financial accounting method. So while it will um, absolutely no doubt help us, um, it does come with, with that um, caution. But uh, it's absolutely a great piece of work. I'm glad to see it coming forward today, and I'm happy to move the recommendations. Thank you, Councillor Parry. Councillor Pottinger. <coughs> Maybe my memory is uh, failing, but on page 197 and 3.2 in the first bullet point, Dockies uh, Schools Campus, uh, I remember some history there where I was told it was a 25-year contract, uh, and after the 25 years, we had special arrangements where that asset would become ours. Um, other other uh, agreements after that, uh, which uh, were in place, were longer terms, and the asset uh, didn't become ours. Um, so I just wonder if uh, you can help me with my memory uh, and say if that was a 25-year contract or a 30-year contract for the Dockyard High School campus. Mr Gladwin. Thank you, Provost. Thank you, Councillor Pottinger. And indeed, this is a question that um, a member raised that I think one of the briefings or at Business Transformation Steering Group. It is indeed a 30-year contract, and we did double-check that in the back of the earlier question, so the, the, the figures we've got here are, are accurate, and that is correct. But I can only think there, had, there was some discussion as the contract was put together over a shorter term, and perhaps that's what's, what's jogging your memory, and indeed your, your colleague that asked the same question at an earlier stage, Councillor Pottinger. Mr Turpey. Chair, I think the, Mr Gladwin has answered the question correctly. Just to reassure Councillor Pottinger, I was working on the project team for the Dalkey Schools Community Campus and it did start off as a 25-year contract, but during the, during the negotiation of it, it then extended to 30 years to cover that. So it, it, you're, you are correct, it did start off as 25 years, but Mr Gladwin is also correct. The signed document in the Council safe is for a 30-year contract. Thank you for that clarification. Um, Councillor Snell. Uh, yes, just to, to recap on the history of this, when the previous accounting standard, which tracked the indebtedness period, was created, uh, LASAC, which is the body for uh, local authority accountants, challenged that. So it's been uh, over 10 years, really, this debate's been going on. And four years ago, uh, my group wrote uh, to uh, the uh, relevant authorities saying, get in line with fair value accounting as practiced by the private sector. Uh, so it's pleasing that it's come to this, albeit it's been taken a very long time to, to change the rules. But the, this puts us on a, a, an evil, a, a, level, a level playing field with uh, other parts of, of the economy. Uh, one loose end, um, some time ago, all the parties here looked at the question of, of expensing of pothole repairs. And we all resolved that where uh, an intermediate repair that might uh, involve a patch that would take uh, 10 years uh, before it started to decay, should be spread over the 10 years rather than expensed immediately. That was rather uh, rejected by Cape Force, and I wonder if it's worth us uh, again suggesting, in order to encourage uh, better pothole repairs, that we stop the accounting tail wagging the pothole dog, and again get back to a position where we can do better quality uh, repairs on the roads of Midlothian. Um, Mr Gladwin, do you want to speak to them, reply to that? Thanks. Thank you, Provost. Thank you, Councillor Smith. I think there was a question there. Um, so, so the determination of revenue and capital expenditure, and I, I'm obviously not going to comment on the, the, the response that the Finance Secretary gave when it, it was raised, but um, if it's a maintenance issue, it's clearly revenue expenditure. If we're upgrading an asset or extending the life of an asset, that's capital expenditure. So, so it really depends on the nature of the work. If it's a repair to a pothole and it's, you know, it's got a relatively short period, it is a revenue expense. If we're actually replacing a piece of road that the pothole's on, then you know, it's, it's capital. So it, it, you know, the devil's really in the detail of whether it can be expensed as capital or revenue. 
Yeah, I'll not spend long on this. It's a middle ground between a full, re full reconstruction of the road and what we currently do, which is a quick, quick splat, uh, and which tends to fail within one or two years. So let's take that uh, the subject up offline sometime. Thank you both for that. Um, this council is it was council. This paper is moved by Councillor Parry, and uh, may I have a seconder, Councillor Smale? Thank you. And we move on to 8.7, the medium term financial strategy. Um, final paper for you, I think, uh, today, Mr Gladwin. You'll be very thankful. Indeed, Provost, thank you. This report provides Council with an update on the medium term financial strategy for 2023-24 to 2027-28 that focuses mainly on 2023-24 and follows on from reports presented to Council on the 13th of December and the 31st of January. At Council on the 31st of January, I covered in some detail the size of the challenge, the external environment and the statutory duties of councillors in setting council budgets. For completeness, this is included again in sections 3.1 to 3.10 of my report. Sections 3.11 to 3.25 of the report cover both the national funding position for local government in 23-24 and the specific impact on Midlothian. Again, I covered this in some detail at Council on the 31st of January, so today I will simply highlight the main changes since then as described in section 317 and 320. The first change relates to national funding of £32.8 million for teachers' pay going back to 2021-22. This, this was previously not included in the local, go local government finance settlement. It now is, and Midlothian's share is £656,000. The second change relates to general funding for teachers, with the Scottish Government now withholding £45.5 million of funding nationally, equating to £0.850 million for Midlothian, unless at least the same number of teachers are employed in 2023-24 as in 2022-23, as measured by the annual census. Scottish Government funding figures are not yet final, with the Scottish Government 2023-24 Budget Bill finalising its passage through Parliament later on today, with final funding figures for Council expected later this week. Sections 326 to 335 of the report covers base budget work. Due to the ongoing fluidity of pay negotiations, funding for pay costs and general inflationary pressures, budgets for 2023-24 carry more delivery risk than normally the case. Tables 4 and Tables 5 chart movements from the opening and underlying budget gap in 2023-24 through to the remaining budget gap of £12.183 million in 2024 after updating income and expenditure budgets. The position for Midlothian Integration Joint Board is presented in sections 336 to 338. Figures presented today reflect Scottish Government guidance on the minimum amount that should be provided to Midlothian Integration Joint Board, as stated in the Deputy First Minister's letter appended at, included sorry, Appendix G. Sections 339 and 340 outline savings proposals for fees and charges and small grants that the Business Transformation Steering Group have endorsed, thus reducing the remaining, remaining budget gap in 2023-24 by £0.401 million. The previous agenda item today covered service concession arrangements, with Council approving implementation of the fiscal flexibility offered, and also the equal and prudent phasing of retrospective benefits to the sum of £4.093 million in 2023-24, thus, thus reducing the remaining budget gap further to £7.836 million once additional loan charges of £0.147 million to access this um, retrospection are factored in. Public consultation on the savings proposals is complete and feedback is included for information at Appendix D. Savings proposals to the value of £4.953 million remain available for decision after the Business Transformation Steering Group recommended acceptance of some, as I covered, covered earlier in my, in my introduction, and also removal of the proposal relating to reducing teacher numbers, which is now undeliverable without penalty. Acceptance of all remaining proposals, alongside a 5% increase in Band D Council tax to £1,514.73 as set out in Appendix E, would generate a small budget surplus of £0.107 million in 2023-24, 
and this surplus could be earmarked to support ongoing transformational work. The remaining budget gap through to 2027-28 is estimated at £15.026 million and continues to illustrate the challenge ahead for Midlothian Council to achieve ongoing financial sustainability. This is a report for decision. Council are asked to approve recommendations B to accept the Business Transformation Steering Group recommendation on fees and charges, small grants and application of service concession retrospection. Recommendation C to approve an allocation to Midlothian Integration Joint Board for 2023-24 of £57.926 million. Recommendation E to approve the remaining updated budget proposals of £4.953 million in 2023-24. Recommendation F to approve an increase in Band D council tax of 5%. And recommendation G to approve that the remaining budget surplus of £0.107 million is set aside to support transformational work required to reach ongoing financial sustainability. Otherwise, Council are asked to note the remaining recommendations. Thank you, Provost. Thank you, Mr Gladwin. Councillor Parry, please. Uh, thank you, Provost. Um, can I start just by saying that despite the tough economic challenges and an increase in demand for our services and a challenging and fixed budget position, all Midlothian councillors have worked hard to do our best for the people of Midlothian. We do all care deeply, and we all care about council services, and if we didn't, we simply wouldn't be here. Um, but we've all listened carefully. We've engaged with our residents. We've spoken to our employees, our trade unions, and community partners. We have also held numerous and countless meetings of councillors and council officers, and we've worked tirelessly through cross-party working to find consensus. The public engagement process produced over 1,600 responses um, and possibly more in inboxes, um, and we thank everybody who engaged with us to tell us their priorities. During this really intense uh, process, we also focused hard on how we could change the delivery of our services and transform the Council. So we have taken steps to recoup costs to the Council through proposals to increase charges to developers, for example. And we've also explored how we can use our current funding and assets, um, as we talked about in the last paper, more flexibly. All that work combined has brought us to the position that we present today, and I'm consciously aware of the importance that this meeting has on our residents and those watching online. So in the interest uh, of those watching Provis, I will just give a brief summary of the budget proposal that we have today, and then I know that other groups might also want to um, reflect. So, whilst we want to further transform the work that we do, some budget saving proposals put forward by council officers need further work. In some cases, this does not mean they are completely off the table, but we recognise that we either need to find a different way to deliver that service, work with our communities, or in some cases take further difficult decisions. Therefore, councillors feel that proposals to reduce staff in our libraries and school libraries and move to e-books for the next financial year deserve more thought and we haven't taken this even forward for this financial year. Similarly, whilst we feel strongly about supporting and working with bus companies to increase services to Midlothian, this work cannot be realised in order for us to move ahead, and so we will continue to invest in community transport funding, supported bus travel, and the savings assigned for school and ASN transport this year have not been taken by councillors. We are acutely aware of the impacts on the third sector from other proposals, such as non-statutory early years funding, and we haven't taken these. And while there might be different models of working in the future, um, that's one that we've not taken today. Can I also just stress, while we're talking about third sector funding, um, to the recipients of the three-year grants that are funded up until 2025 are not affected by today's budget. We do think that we can work towards better models of third sector partnership working, but that work will now be focused ahead of 2025. And a letter of comfort to that effect was sent to recipients of the large grant last Friday. But given the recent misguided or otherwise publicity on third sector funding, I do feel like this is important to point out. We appreciate that the Council has an opportunity to increase its income through advertising revenue. As an entrepreneurial group of councillors, um, we have been focused on that work. Um, however, there are some savings proposals where those might um, be a solution but they cannot be realised for this year. Therefore, the proposals for our school crossing patrols, galleries and Christmas lights have been removed. 
our young people are the future of Midlothian, as we heard uh, so passionately um, this morning. We hold dear their voices and their opinions, and young people have told us overwhelmingly that music tuition is important to them, and we have not taken this evening's proposal forward, nor have we removed P4 swimming provision. There are some savings, of course, that we will take forward, um, and these proposals are things that we'll have to do as a council anyway, like transforming the school week to make it fit for modern purposes, particularly for senior pupils, and to, and to implement changes to terms and conditions to teachers' contact time. But we have also, um, as uh, David Gladwin um, set out, not taken forward the proposal to reduce um, teacher numbers um, today. On the issue of St Matthew's um, Primary School, I know that this has generated um, a lot of concern. The Council's vision is to have <coughs> a joint campus um, with Rosewell Primary and for it to retain its identity and provision, and that's something that can be hopefully explored in the future. However, there is clearly much more work to do on this proposal, and we absolutely have to work with our um, communities, pupils um, and parents, and councillors do not feel like they can take this proposal forward today. Other issues that the public fed back to us included public safety and our environment, and so we'll continue to invest in the Midlothian Community Action Teams, Pennycook Recycling Centre, Grass Cutting, our Trading Standards Officers, and our Midlothian Rangers. This year, instead, we have um, targeted our land services for a budget reduction um, rather than, than doing that. And as we're still recovering from COVID and still need to fully investigate the impact this has had on our leisure facilities, as well as increased competition in some places, um, we'll continue to invest in Gorebridge and Newton Grange leisure facilities, as well as remove the proposal to reduce overtime. Um, other proposals not taken forward today include Out of Hours Gritton and Dalkeith Bowling Club uh, savings reductions. Um, in the interest of transparency, Provost, I do want to cover what savings we are taking today. It would be fair for me to sit here and give all the um, the good news. Um, as part of a cross-party um, amendment that we that met this morning, we did agree to take forward savings proposals on PPP school closures during holidays, public toilets, uh, night security, um, third-party contracts review, a 1% DSM budget, and continuous improvement team internal audit. There is a few other um, savings proposals that we have um, added. Um, that came from cross-party work and in other groups, and other groups might want to um, speak to those, but for example, um, parking fines to achieve um, full recovery. Um, the removal of these proposals must, however, be balanced financially within the constraints of our budget, and so we are proposing to increase council tax by 5 per cent. And I know that that um, figure will be really challenging for some people, so we will at the same time continue to identify people who might be eligible for council tax discounts and signpost people to help and support um, already in place through the council's cost of living task force and by continuing to fund the welfare rights services. We have continued to invest in health and social care, but given our demographic pressures are not fully funded, we have re reflected on our IGB allocation with an awareness that this will be challenging. However, we hope that across the public sector, we can all work together more efficiently, procure more efficiently and review how we commission services. Just to conclude, um, Provost, this budget is not the budget we all would want to see in front of us, and we absolutely need to have meaningful conversations with governments about making sure Midlothian gets the funding it needs and it deserves. And can I just add by saying that councillors have done the absolute very best that we possibly can to prioritise the services that residents hold dearly within the restraints of a fixed budget. And can I lastly thank all councillors who have worked constructively for the benefit of their community, and I will move the amendment. Provost, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Parry. Councillor Milligan. Thank you, Provost, and thanks, um, Councillor Parry. Um, I think you've succinctly put just exactly how we all feel. I mean, I, I, I want to really start by just saying this is probably the most challenging budget times that I've ever came across. It's exceptionally difficult to find a way to balance this book. And uh, let's be quite frank here, we've not solved the problem here today. We've quite simply uh, um, rearranged our repayment schemes and our borrowing um, to try and take big chunks of money to try and offset some of the more severe cuts here. So this isn't going away, it's simply uh, um, delaying that. And I've got to say, certainly when you read through the paperwork and you see that by 27-28, 
was to find another £15 million plus uh, um, for, for budgets. It's a task and a half in front of us, and it's not going to be um, easy. So a lot of these budgets, and, and I heard that the, the, the two young speakers for the school speaking about every year music tuitions uh, um, on here, and there's this cloud hanging over them. And quite frankly, they're 100% right, but unless we get the proper funding that we require to deliver services, then the reality is every year for the next four years, we're going to be sitting here trying to figure out what we're going to reduce to actually balance these, the, these budgets. I see a lot of the stuff here on this table as a stay execution today rather than being removed, because quite frankly, I do not know where this council gets in £15 million pound because its charges are as high as it can, can put them. When the council relies on 77 per cent of its funding for the government and only 23 per cent for council tax, the council has very limited scope to be able to, to meet budget gaps. So therefore, if there's a continual freeze on council uh, um, spending or a cut in council spending in real terms, if there's additional responsibilities given to councils, the money for that has to come from somewhere. And 77 per cent of all our services comes for government grant in one way or another. So therefore, it is really out of councillors' um, hands. And one of the things I think we all need to do, not just the councillors across party, but the third sector, the voluntary sector, the whole lot, we need to actually be focusing on trying to persuade the government that as the fastest growing authority in Scotland by far, we need to be funded properly. We absolutely uh, um, do. I actually look at the, 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 the funding elements, and, and it sometimes gets me a, a bit on the angry side. You look at the flooring mechanism, where we lose over £3 million to support shrinking councils. You look at additional early years, where we're told, here's what we've got to do, but this is all the money that's going to go there. And depending on the figures you look at, you get to between 3 and £5 million pound a gap. For us to to, to, to pay that, we've got to take that for other services. So we've got to actually start making the case to, to the government that we need funding and we need it in the most up-to-date with the, 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 the actual figures that we've got now, with the population figures that we're sitting with now, no stuff that's historical. We really need to get there. I listened very intently to the two yeah, um, uh, um, representation, representatives from the schools, and, and I actually get what they're saying. But here comes the reality check, is education is your biggest spender by far, by far, followed by the IGB, followed by children's services. If we put a ring around them and actually protect the them 100%, what you would be left with would be an Armageddon out every other service. You would see massive cuts in bin collections, road sweep-ins. We wouldn't be able to maintain our land services, grass cutting. Uh, and litter picking, we wouldn't have libraries, we wouldn't have leisure centres, we wouldn't have swimming pools, and we still wouldn't balance the budget at the end of that. We still wouldn't balance the budget at the end of that. We do actually care. We're not sitting here because we didn't care. We didn't actually put our names up here because we didn't care. We absolutely care. And some of the areas there, Kelly's quite right, we're still having to take some of the hard decisions. But it's, it's, it's critical that the decisions we are taking, we monitor on a regular basis to make sure that the savings that we are looking for or efficiencies that we are wanting are, are got. We need to make sure that we are getting them. We need to be working with the third sector uh, um, right across the board, and it does not matter uh, um, you know, whether that is a cab office, uh, um, MVA, whatever. They are all delivering very valuable services, and none of us want to see them go. None of us want to see them go. But if you've only got a pound to spend, you can only spend that pound. You can't spend two. You can only spend uh, um, two. When it comes to council tax at 5%, it's already going to be challenging for the public out there. It's really going to be challenging for some groups of people. But we need to really keep in mind as well that through the grant for the Scottish Government last year, Every council tax bill was reduced by around £300. That is going to bounce back this year. That is going to bounce back. So it is not just a 5% rise people are going to see. 
they're going to see a 300 pound rise and then that five percent so it's going to be a big jump to, to their pockets i did see something very quickly on my news screen this morning that talked about westminster government issuing more money uh, um, to help with the, the financial crisis that's there i think we need to see what's there uh, and through the devolved settlement to see if there is any more money there to see if there's anything we can do to, 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 to um, help with the impact this will this cost. I take my hat off to each of the political groups. It's been really, really difficult to come to consensus in here, but we've managed. We've, we've had meeting after meeting, finally meeting this morning at 9.30, you know, less than an hour and a half before we come in here to try and iron out what we could agree and what we couldn't. We've got an agreement here. It's the best we could do. It probably will satisfy people right across the board at the moment, but let's make it very, very clear that unless we see a change in the way we're funded and the amount we're funded to, then there are a good chance a lot of what we've looked at before will be on the table next year. And we didn't have the, 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 the luxury of the time we've had this year because we all knew you had financial flexibilities all coming in that you might could via some more money in. Because, quite frankly, if we didn't make these decisions and get these savings identified for next year very early, then what we're going to find ourselves is actually having no option but to take very unpalatable decisions. So I'd like to, uh, uh, along with the Council Leader, I think thank everybody for, for their time. David Gladwin there, uh, um, all over the weekend in the middle of going and picking up his kids, having to communicate with, 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 with myself and Councillor Parry and, uh, and, and Councillor Small. And, uh, um, the invalid there on the television, uh, uh, Mr. Virgo. Uh, uh, um, um, <laughs> you can see he's far away. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm glad he is. I had to meet him for training last week and then found out he had COVID and I thought, oh, crikey, I'm off. Uh, uh, um, however, it has been really difficult. It's not been nice. The amount of emails coming in to councillors this year, I think, will probably be a record. At a record because people are saying to us, you need to care, don't cut. Well, we do care, and we're not cutting. We're putting st the, our prices up as high as we can put them up. We're putting our council tax up higher than we want to put it. But if you've not got the money, you cannot spend it. So therefore, we need to make sure that we're talking to all the right people. I have met with the, the, the two elected MSPs and directly elected councillor uh, uh, Councillor MSP uh, um, Colin Beatty and Christine Graham. Uh, uh, I've met with both of them. We've been into the Scottish Parliament. We've met uh, and discussed with Anna Sarwar, Jackie Bailey, uh, and a group of the Labour councillors. Uh, I'm, uh, I've been invited in with Jeremy Belfar and M Miles, sorry, I can't remember Miles' is say, Briggs', Briggs uh, uh, say name. We'll have a, a further meetings with MSPs this year, this week, to, to try and push the fact at the settlement that Midlothian um, really needs to get fair funding here. And it's no more funding, it's fair funding. Mm -hmm. And I think all the MSPs actually can see the, 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 the necessity here to get that funding in. And I think we all need to come together to, to persuade our MSPs right across the political spectrum that we need to have that fair funding. Uh, with that, could I endorse and second the, 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 the move into this paper and the amendments that are in it? I also like just for noting the fact that there will be an additional 2.5 million for capital in the, 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 the road land services budget that, this year, which will offset some of the cuts to the, 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 the revenue and the flexibilities that are there. Thank you, Councillor Milligan. And uh, Councillor Virgo, please. Um, Councillor Milligan. Provost, I'm just seeing enough a lot of messages coming in saying nobody could hear David Virgo outside the meeting. Thank you. So um, the paper is proposed by Councillor Parry, seconded by Councillor Milligan. Is anyone? Oh, Mr. Chirpy. Chair, okay, please just uh, to clarify something. I, I wasn't at the BTSG meeting at half nine this morning, but my understanding is that there's been a slight amendment, and it's something perhaps only an accountant and a lawyer could love. Um, but the proposal that the reduction in offer to the Northern Integration Joint Board wouldn't be a, a reduction in the offer, it would be an expectation of a variation during the financial year which would be returned or not called on from the Council in terms of uh, Clause 9.9 .9 of the integration scheme which we agreed in, in June last year. And so just to clarify if that's, yeah, that's Council, my understanding position, I just want the, all 18 members to have the same understanding. Yeah, Councillor Parry. 
Yes, it was discussed this morning at our business transformation steering group. Thanks. And yes, your understanding is correct. Badwin. Thank you, Provost. And you'll be pleased to know I'm not coming back on Mr. Turpey's point. Uh, uh, it's just a, 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 very, a very small and, a, I suppose, a final um, comment from you on the, the, the amendment. And I think recommendation G is to be deleted rather than be accepted. So it's just to um, reflect that in the record. What page was that, please, Mr. Gladwin? So, recommendation G. So what page? Oh, sorry, on, on page 209. Thank you. Oh, page 219, thank you. Uh, Councillor Winchester. Thank you, Provost. I've been struggling with um, the uh, one, one part of the budget um, since the weekend, and as a group, we've had discussion after discussion on this. I understand the realities of such a difficult problem and agree with every single budget proposal bar one, and that is the withholding of the £1.3 million to the IJB. As a previous health professional, I know how much this money or what this money will do, and it covers the health of Midlothian residents, and without that money, I think that there will be a big problem. Thank you for that, Councillor Winchester. Councillor Smale? Uh, yes, as many councils will be aware, uh, I'm concerned that our budget does not reflect the reality of how Hill End is going to pan out. We're expecting 600,000 of income to help bridge the budget gap and net 412,000. We're here in March. Uh, I do not think the Alpine Coaster will be ready on the 1st of October. If it is, I'll happily accompany uh, uh, Councillor Cassidy on the first run. But uh, it is not, I think, prudent for this to be in our budget. The loan co costs are going to be uh, over that, uh, 500,000 plus this year, a million next year. There is a material risk that this is going to uh, eat into our general revenue account. And on that basis, although I'm not opposing uh, what is proposed here, I don't uh, believe I should vote for it. Okay, so, so both Councillor Winchester and Councillor Smale, are you... Um, We're proposing to abstain. You're a, a pros right, okay. Can I ask, is, every, is anyone else otherwise minded on the amendment that we have from Councillor Parry, um, seconded by Councillor Milligan? We've got Councillor Smale and Councillor Winchester abstaining. Is everybody else happy with the amendment? Yeah, Mr. Turpey, are we happy with that? I think just for the record, and again, I'm letting my pedantry come to the fore. Rather than abstaining, I take it you wish your dissent on these particular note, these, these two specific items to be noted. Thank you um, for your advice, Mr. Turpey. Um, and a, a thank you to Mr. Gladwin and the finance team. It has been it's been a journey, I think it's fair, fair to say, David, and I thank you and your team um, very much. Um, we move on to...